Hello, can I get a drum roll please? Controller settings, my controls, camera, angles. I'm covering it all. Beautiful people, what's happening? Welcome back to the YouTube channel, right off the rip. Bang my line. That means turn on notifications. Subscribe if you're new, it helps the channel out a lot. We're trying to have that movement with FIFA 22. Many of you, especially in the live stream, ask about all of these details. And these are tools, they are assets to maximize your FIFA potential. I didn't say miracle workers. I'm giving you the controller settings, my adjustments, everything extremely straightforward and transparent. I'm not here to BS around. That's not me. Let me know in the comments, what have you adjusted? Also, what camera angle are you using? Because we will have some room for discussion, as we should. That's what creating content is all about, having a voice in the community. If you haven't liked it, and subscribed it at this point my feelings are hurt and if my eyes look crazy one I'm not feeling the best two organics if you know then you know speaking of the shirt might help you out option a home customize settings then you have new options customize controls we're starting at the default this is what EA provides to you as a default let's shift let me help you along your FIFA quest. Competitive Master Switch. That's gonna be on in any online game mode. There's no reason to play with this being off. And you don't want assisted dribbling or auto clearances and shots being taken and flare passes and headers and so forth and so on. The only adjustment that you may have to make, it doesn't come into play for yours truly, is the jockey is now gonna be manual instead of assisted. Many of you watching this video are accustomed to having jockey on assisted. So we're turning that on. I don't care if you're playing squad battles or your friends if you care about any level of progression becoming an intermediate player or better have this on because everything online will default to this being turned on fifa trainer obvious please hide that time finishing in fifa 22 it's back at the moment especially with the finesse shots please leave this on you're getting added bonuses and benefits i'm seeing long shot videos everywhere myself included i'm making some of those videos twitch.tv slash mike labelle that's a plug. Hopefully Jose threw something on screen. Next player switch indicator. I personally like to have this off. However, if you are struggling with player switching, especially with the right analog stick, leave this on. It gives you a little more information as to what player is likely going to be the next switch or the next pickup or who's on the horizon. But for me, it's more of a distraction than it is a benefit. Pass block assistance. And I like to be very transparent. I haven't decided if I prefer this on or if I prefer this off. It deals with interceptions and some of the animations or lack thereof. And there are benefits in, in both of these circumstances. An attempt automatically, especially considering that we know the AI is often overpowered, can be beneficial. But at the same time, what if they make a misstep, lunging in, and that's not what you were anticipating, that's a problem. So for now, I'm leaving it on, but it is a segment that I'm experimenting with. I just like to be very open with all of you. This could shift. Auto switching, air balls, loose balls, or manual. This is what I'm currently using. I don't really trust EA at the moment to make it where it's only on loose balls or air balls or it's completely manual. And I've played on manual previously. Just the current build of the game is a little bit sketchy if you've been playing on the next gen. If we're analyzing, or taking a bit of a deeper dive with responsiveness. Even playing offline, I'd like to wait for the next patch before making this final adjustment. Auto switching move assistance. None is good to go, low is okay. I've never really and truly used high or enjoyed high. It's just a matter of giving you a second to refocus. They use the word orient your intended direction for the new player. If you have questions with any of these settings, by all means, ask me. I will answer you in the comments. I will give you my opinion from many many years of playing FIFA and having success I'm not here to broken record but I got a track record that puts me in a credible place clearance assistance I prefer directional a little more control as to what I'm doing versus the classic where there is more assistance with the game deciding where your clearance is going very important when you're dealing with crosses aerial pursuit corner kicks directional is the shift player lock on it's, it's gonna be an effective feature this year expect to see it used at the higher levels in particular icon switching which is brand new to fifa 22 and it's to be determined still early i have not seen or witnessed people live streaming or content creators pro players social media i'm leaving it on 
but I haven't seen anyone really take action or look like they have a mastery in icon switching. Right stick switching. Player relative is easier versus ball relative. I think that it makes more logical sense. It's more organic. It's natural. That's where I'm heading. I, I think most people agree that player relative is more simple than ball relative. Ground pass as it is. Shot assistance. Cool. This is the one that I shift. I've always preferred crossing on semi. It doesn't mean you don't get any help, but I do feel that I can aim it a little bit more. And it's something that I've built into my gameplay over multiple years. It used to be the default was semi-assisted, not standard assisted. I'm stressing that because if you've played FIFA for multiple years, you might not have even noticed that that changed. Lob pass, assisted, save, semi. Analog sprint, I turn this off. It deals with when you're hitting the sprint button. Basically, the more you hold it down, you get a little more of a jolt versus if you're just holding it normally. I'm not someone who beats up my controllers. I'm, I'm not stressing throughout the, the, the matches. I've always felt that I have control of just hitting the button. I don't need I don't need a further assessment, but it's not gonna make or break your gameplay on or off. Pass receiver lock, late user vibration. I don't want any of it, off. Those are the controller settings. My controls, there's one major shift. If you're new here, my attack is on classic. Everything is the exact same, but my defense, I make it where tackle is X and the double team command, teammate contain. It used to be so relevant, prevalent, overpowered, and it hasn't been this way in multiple years, and it makes me sad, but the double team button is gonna be circle. So you're basically going back and forth between tackling with X and then circle with the double team, and then I leave. I don't even touch it. Contain, R1. That is a command that I do not know. It's not in my selection. It's not in my arsenal. I should say this is a bit of an old school defensive setup because if you go back to the foot golden era, the FIFA 12 to FIFA 16, the games are very arcadey and fast paced. It was much more dynamic, adjustable. There was more common sense with having your pressure and your tackle commands right next to each other because you were on and off, on and off, on and off. And that has changed dramatically in the current versions of FIFA. We have not seen the same types of impact or competitive advantage to receive via having this mastery of being able to micromanage, at least not in comparison to that golden era of Ultimate Team. Which brings me to the question, would you prefer a fast arcade game or a slow simulation title? Very different experiences. And that has been the argument. I had a 50-50 vote on Twitter in regards to this exact question. Dead center. This is important. Game settings. We're gonna adjust camera views. Uh, let's go back to the default. EA Sports Game Cam. I don't know what that is. Please don't use it. You either want to run telebroadcast or you're going to look to play co-op. Those are the main two. Is it possible that we see some sort of shift this year? Indeed. But I like making videos based on measurables and precedent. And in previous installments, it's really been co-op or telebroadcast. So we're going to go telebroadcast. That's what I prefer. And it's important, at least for my settings, camera setting wise, go to custom and then you can adjust it. So your camera height, I'm gonna play at 20 and then I'm gonna take the zoom down to five. Now you can shift this however you feel most comfortable, but the big importance is that you have that tele broadcast, which is even on both ends of the pitch. Whether you're vertical or you're horizontal, everything is equal. And before we jump ship, also take a look at visual. Maybe you don't like the player name bar. You want an indicator, you want player name and indicator. You get the idea. You can go in and make changes. The default is often not the most effective. Thanks for watching. Let me know. What are your settings? What have been your adjustments? Put that in the comments down below. Turn on those notifications. Bang my line. It's free to subscribe and I have a lot more content coming out ASAP, ASAP.